picture. On this day of the class, I have some time built into our, our class meeting where this part is really done best one-on-one -on -one because the idea is we're going to connect your website to the search engine. And people come in with different websites, uh, different ways that their website was built. So I'm going to talk about this in general, but then we're going to have the time to do this one-on-one. -on -one. If you're able to uh, do this in class with me here to help you, I'd be happy to help you. If you're, able, if you're not able to do it at this point and want to do it at another time, you, you can, of course. But obviously here with a little help would be the best. So the idea is... Um, uh, or um, activity... Uh, connect your website to the search engines. We'll be setting up Bing and Google Webmaster Tools. I'll talk in general how to set that up and then we'll have one on one time. So depending on the size of the class, usually that, that takes a little while, and that's fine. I, I, that's what I'm planning on day two of the class. Let's look at the handout in, in general and then see what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to set up Google and Bing Webmaster Tools. Uh, each of these search engines has like an official portal where you go to read about the do's and don'ts and the best practice for each search engine. Uh, this is where they're going to tell you, make sure your site has this. There seems to be a problem with your website there. Uh, they both have that completely for free. Um, this is where we can read the documentation, best practices and such. We're going to do uh, Bing first. When we set that one up, then we'll, we'll go back to Google. Uh, because with Bing, I think it's more straightforward. With Google, we have Google Search Console and Google Analytics. That's what we're going to do. Short answer, that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up Google Analytics and Bing's version as well. Uh, we've got Google Search Console and Google Analytics for Google. But with Bing, it's just Bing Webmaster Tools. Google has several different screens that you have to set up and log into to use its features. Bing um, came out after Google and they've consolidated it all into one login screen. So I think it's a little easier to set up Bing first and then we'll do uh, Google. So on this PDF, if you click on that link there, bing.com slash webmasters, etc. If you click on that, it should open up on, on your web browser. It may pop up to, to ask you to confirm, but go ahead and click on that first link there, Bing Webmaster Tools, the guidelines, click on that. And then this is, this is the manual. This is the help and how to. This is how to set it all up, what it is. And what we're going to see is, on both the Google and Bing Webmaster Tools, we're going to see a lot of charts and data uh, about traffic and traffic sources. And, and uh, perhaps errors on your website and such. The whole point of all of these, of both of these webmaster tools is uh, to get data. Both give you data, information. They both give you knowledge so that you can see what's working. To keep doing it, or what's not working to fix. If I'm being very active on Facebook, and then I look on my analytics here, and it says you're not getting any traffic from Facebook, well, either I will give up on Facebook, or see what I can do, what more I need to learn to make it more effective on Facebook. If I see on my data there that it shows I get a lot of traffic on Tuesdays from YouTube, 
Okay, well, that's telling me I should capitalize on that. It seems that my target audience is active on Tuesdays. On YouTube, I'm going to create two videos a week on Tuesday. I was doing one video per month. I didn't know what day. I was just putting it on some day. And then I figure out here, it seems to be Tuesday. So I'm going to try for a little while. I'm going to put two videos every other week on a Tuesday. See what happens. So this will give you so much data you won't believe. You'll get demographic data, age, so that's like age, gender, location. You'll get um, uh, landing page. Backlinks. These things that will make sense as we do it. But uh, it'll tell you which is your most popular page. It'll say, it seems that your, uh, your about page gets a lot of traffic. So if I know that, maybe I can put some more valuable things on that page. Not only about information, but direct links to buy this or subscribe to that. If I'm getting a lot of people coming into that screen first, instead of my home screen, what can I do on my About page to capitalize on that? And I'll be able to see where are people coming from. I'll be able to see, oh, someone wrote an article about my business. I didn't even know. They reviewed me, and they linked to my website. I'm getting traffic from that website. We'll talk about then, well, what's, what's the value of knowing where your traffic is coming from? We'll talk about that. I have a handout, and we'll, we'll get to that. But you get all of this information from setting up these tools. And it's for free. So we're going to set up Bing first. Um, the link is uh, bing.com slash toolbox. So on this Help Center, you can browse this stuff whenever you want. But we were, we're going to set ourselves up. Bing.com slash toolbox. Even if you don't have a website, you can uh, still create this. And then once you've got your website, you can then finish setting it up. Bing.com slash toolbox. So the general idea general steps are set up free account at Google and Bing verify your site ownership and then let it collect data and analyze data to make choices. So um, we're going to do Bing in a moment. We're going to create the account. If you've got a website, uh, this is the part where I can talk about in general how to do this, and then we can do individually. Once we've got this set up, this will probably take us you know, the last section of the class. Next time, a week later, once we've got this set up, we'll have a week's worth of data, perhaps. And then we can start analyzing the data. We'll let it collect the data for the next week, and we'll analyze the data next time. Because once we set this up, this is going to start to collect data from this point on. Uh, it doesn't collect data from a month ago. I might have had a website for a year, but if I never set this up a year ago, I've been missing out on a year's worth of data. So the sooner this is set up, the better, because then it'll track where's your traffic coming from. This will even tell you what are your popular keywords. What are the words that people are searching for on Google and Bing that people are then finding you at? And that might even tell me keywords that I didn't even think about. So here what we're going to do is, OK, want more users, sign in. And oh, uh, remember on day one, I talked about how there's the easy way and the hard way to do SEO. This class is going to be the hard way. This class is going to be the long way of reading the documentation and writing competitor analysis and all of that. The easy way for SEO is just to pay for it, to rank higher and get visibility and that's not bad of course it's just it just takes money to do it but look at this Bing says sign up now and receive a hundred dollars search credit 
I believe you have to commit to pay a hundred dollars, then you'll get a hundred dollars. It's not just free. Here's a hundred dollars. It's something like that. You you start a little bit of the payment thing, and then you get a hundred dollars, which is still good because it's a hundred dollars to use. Now this is only for Bing right here, because Google is the big one. They they're not going to give anything for free. They're so big and entrenched. You know, you're going to pay them. Here they want your traffic. They want your patronage. So they're going to give you a hundred dollars to get started. And again, I I said in this class we're not going to focus on that. The PPC, the pay per click stuff. But it's in the documentation, in this help stuff. You'll be able to see in here how, how it's all done. And by uh, spending a few dollars to get some marketing and some advertising, it might help you uh, get the ball rolling to get traffic. OK, I'm going to click Sign In. And this is where then. Uh, if you've got a um, an account already, if you've got either sign in and sign up. Under sign in, you can log in with a Microsoft account, a Google account, or a Facebook account. If you'd like to create a brand new account to set all of this up, you can do sign up. I guess the same thing. So a Microsoft account would be like Hotmail or Outlook. You can do a, G, a Google, a Gmail account. So this is pretty new. They, it was different before. Now you can use Facebook or Google. Question? Does that Gmail account have to the website? No. These, um... Yes. Um, it just needs, it needs to be tied to an email account. That's it. Okay. Can you tie multiple sites at the same account? Yes. And is there any advantage or disadvantage to choosing the Facebook or Google? No, I think just one is a is a little easier to to set up. Uh, there's no advantage for any SEO related stuff. It's just ease of setting up the account. Yes. I don't have a website. Well, I started a free website on WordPress.com. Uh -huh. Should I do that over there? WordPress.com is... Free yes, but I mean, it's not quite compatible with these webmaster tools. Right. Th these are all set up to be able to track the data of a website on a service provider, GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. Uh, WordPress.com itself will give you some analytics. But to get these from Bing or Google, uh, you're going to need the, the ones from like Bluehost or GoDaddy. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you verify even though you don't have an actual site set up? Just you will be able to set up the account uh, and verify that you own the website, yes. It doesn't have to be a fully fleshed out website, yes, yet. And it'll start to collect the data, even if it's a parked page. So, Bing can use a Microsoft, Google, or Facebook account to set up. Needs an email address any email needs an email address to set up needs or can be set up multiple sites multiple sites on one email or one account I'm going to log in with one of these that I have as an example. Uh, oh, and I can also we can also say here. Okay, let, let me let me tell you in the way of my example as as a company. Like I said, in, in my company we do this for clients. So me as Victor, the the person that works in in the company PMD Interactive, I can use my email, my login, my Facebook, my Google to set up the client's uh, account. I can then add the owner of the 
company to the account I'm going to create. So in my case, I have to decide either, will I set this up with the owner's Facebook login, or will I set it up with mine? For ease of use, in my case, I would set it up with my credentials. Then I give access to the business owner to their site. Obviously, we've got this all in the contract, and uh, we're a legitimate business and all of that. So if you're, people sometimes take these classes to learn how to do this, to get hired to do this. You have to decide then how you want to do this. Set all of this up with the persons, with the owner's credentials, or your own credentials. For you, that most of you have, I've got, I've got a website I need to set it up. It's a lot more straightforward because then you, you need to set it up here. The complication could be, do I use the company email or a personal? And the answer is either, whichever one you want, whichever is easiest for you. If you have victor at victorsbakery.com, the company email, or victorcampos at gmail.com, the personal, either or. It's up to you to decide which one you want to use. It's going to be tied together. It can be changed later. But you have to decide if you want to use your personal or your business email to set this up. And it doesn't have to be the business email to set up this business profile. It just needs an email address. So I'm going to sign in with one of my emails here. Yes? As a practical matter, would you set multiple sites up on the same email so that you have one access and you get all of your any, any correspondence with Google, that email address? Well, that, that's... That's the, That's what you're going to answer for yourself. Personally, I do that. I have met multiple accounts linked into one... multiple websites linked into one email. The email that I use to run this, this business. Uh, Separating them makes them more secure, but then it has more logins and more things to keep track of. So I can't tell you which one to do. I can just say which one I do, and it's the one that's I just keep it all on one email address. But then I also have um, a good password, and I have phone verification, and try to keep it more secure. So when you say security, just not that multiple people are getting into that one um, security wise yes the, le the the minimal number of people that need to log into this are those that log into it uh, you don't give this information out to more people that you know, it's on a need to know basis and not a lot of people need to know about this myself the owner and maybe one other person in, in my company that does this no, you can set it that a particular company only sees their particular information. So I've got an account here that I have that I use as the example. It's it's completely empty. Uh, I could show the examples of of a uh, the one that I use for real a little later, but the way Bing Master, Bing Webmaster will will look like is this. Uh, there will be a list of sites uh, right here, victorsbakery.com and johnsdogwalkers.biz, whatever. There will be a, a column to show you, are there messages? Uh, is Bing telling you there's a problem on your website? There's a virus on your website? There are broken links on your website? So the search engines will give you like a sort of a free analysis of your website to see if it doesn't have some of these issues you'll have a column that shows clicks from search and appeared in search. Here then we will introduce some new terminology, one we've already seen, impressions, conversions, and CTR, impressions. How many times, 
your content is viewed conversions how many times your content is clicked and CTR a percentage for easy understanding impressions let's say people search on Bing or Google and it will tell you here you appeared 768 times on search results those were impressions people were impressed by it not in the way that we think of the word impressions but in a in a marketing term they were impressed they saw your content well, I care more about the clicks and oftentimes uh, that is again a lot lower just like I've got 10,000 followers but I make seven sales uh, conversions are often very 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 low uh, usually under the under the double digits let's just say just to pick a value uh, then conversions I got then 43 clicks people saw my site and from from those that saw 43 clicks if we then uh, take the uh, calculator and simply divide 43 into 768 percentage that's 5.6 percent which is actually pretty high it's pretty high yes 5.6 percent 5 percent five and a half percent effectiveness CTR which is click through rate CTR click through rate isn't it's just conversions divided by impressions it's a percentage 5.6 percent in this case with random numbers it's gonna be very much more common for you to have 1% and 2% you know if you're getting at 5% and 10% you're doing very well and people of course well I should be getting a hundred percent Well, that doesn't happen well, okay I should be getting 50% that doesn't happen think about how these big companies are inundating us with commercials all day long and you will never buy that product and millions of people will never buy that product but millions of people will so seeing that commercial over and over okay thinking about the Super Bowl commercials yeah, those famous Super Bowl commercials that cost millions of dollars for 30 seconds they do make a lot of sales because everyone's watching those commercials but if they spent 30 million dollars on um, those commercials it doesn't mean they're gonna make 30 million sales maybe they only made half a million sales half a million is a lot smaller than 30 million but half a million sales is a billion dollars of sales or whatever so what Bing is saying in those columns with slightly different names appeared in search impressions clicks from search conversions Google and Bing are both gonna tell you your website appeared X number of times and you got X number of clicks clicks to my website does that mean that then resulted in a sale no the person is still visiting your site but it's still up to them did they click then further to buy or subscribe or whatever the ultimate goal of your website is So uh, this is going to give you the data to see if you're on the right track and such. You will often see appeared in search a lot higher than um, clicks from search. Pages crawled, pages indexed. Uh, the search engine is going to, once we tell the search engine that we exist, it's going to browse your website. It's going to go to the home page and follow every link it can find. If your website has an about page, a contact page, etc., it'll it'll go from the home page and follow this link here, follow the link there, going, going, going. Um, and uh, if it finds new content, it will then um, index it. It will then it will then put it into its database. When we do these searches on the search engines it's looking at the big collection of terms that it has stored 
So if the search engine has crawled your website, if it has browsed your website and um, saved the information, it'll be listed there. So Victor, did it, is it just checking any new updates on your pages or content? Yes, when it indexes, it's not going to index the same about page again. Right. It already so indexed in it. Once I did no additional content. Then the index value will be very low. Yeah, it'll still browse your site, perhaps if you're still active, like let's say on social media and right. such. It'll still browse your site, so your page crawled will often be higher than your page indexed okay. because it doesn't find anything new to add to its index. And notice here it says, "Show me the data in the last 30 days, three months, six months, or longer, like a year or two or more." So as soon as you have this set up, it'll start to gather your data. And all of this data is coming from people doing searches on Bing. This doesn't give you the data of what's happening on Google, because Google is a competitor. But we will set up Google as well. And Google will give you data, but not the data of what's happening on Bing. Yeah? Pages index, is that, and I guess pages are called, is that physical pages of your website that remain on the or is that what we refer to as articles? Well, it's if I'm in my about page and I change that that's a page yeah because each article is a separate page all of those articles are on the blog page but each article is its own page so everything on your site is a page so it'll count here uh, but if that about page hasn't been uh, changed in a year, it won't add it as a new indexed item. This will tell you what new items have been indexed. So if I've got a new portfolio, I put it up the first time with 18 minutes, it's going to index it's going to call 18 pages and index 18 pages. If I don't change that, the next time I run this, it's going to call 18 pages, but it's not going to index them because they haven't changed. They haven't changed, exactly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I sort of feel th these two columns are not even that important because I don't need it to tell me how often I've been updating. I, I know I've been updating or not. But this is just to show you the data that it says, well, we haven't seen anything new on your site. And then maybe it'll shame you into doing something. The more important parts are right here. Clicks from search and and appeared in search. This this one's always also going to be higher than this one. You're going to appear in search a lot, a hundred times, but then you get two clicks. Well, li knowing all of this data, once we've got it all set up, we can see, well, how can we then increase that clicks from search so it's closer to that? And really, never this is never going to equal that. Even for the big, huge companies, they get a, a million, appeared in search a million, and then clicks from search only 700,000. Well, I'd love to have 700,000 clicks. And I'd love to have a million clicks, but I'll settle for 700,000 clicks. So that's always going to be lower. So OK, great. The way we set this up is either by clicking Add Your Site or clicking it up here. We're going to tell the search engine, here's our website. Pay attention to it. So it's simply a matter of typing our website. Victor's San Diego Bakery. I'm just going to put whatever. This is not a real website. I'm going to add a website. So I click Add on that. If you don't have a website, you this is as far as you can go because it won't work without a website. If you have a WordPress.com, this is as far as you can go. But I will show you up to this point where I need to put the name of a website. It's actually saying Add Sitemap, which should be listed as optional. And then when do you receive the most traffic? What these things are saying is a sitemap. Let's see how they define it here. Uh, OK, it doesn't tell you what it is. But what a sitemap is. When you verify a site, you'll want to add a sitemap at some point. A sitemap is a listing of all the pages on your site. The search engine is going to, on its own, crawl your site. It's going to go to your home page and follow the links to, to see the different pages of your site. 
if you provide it a sitemap, you will help it. Uh, you will help it along by telling it all of the uh, all of the uh, pages that are on my site. So that's useful. Now the problem is you probably don't have a website unless you activated one on your site. WordPress has a plugin that can create a sitemap. If you've got, you know, Wix or Squarespace and such, they've got a way to create a sitemap. You you cannot create your own sitemap. I said it's a listing of all your pages, but it's not just like you take out a Word document and you write, I have an about page, I have a contact page. No, it's a very technically created uh, file that uh, has your sitemap written in a, in a certain code. So often your sitemap is something like victors.com slash sitemap.xml. It's some file somewhere on your site that either you created with a plugin or your provider created for you, written in XML code that is in a very specific format that lists all of your pages and when they were last updated and um, first created and all of that. So you yourself usually don't create one. You use a plugin or your website provider creates one. So because I don't know if I even have one, I didn't remember creating one, I'm not going to fill that in. That's OK. That can be added later. When do you receive the most traffic? This is saying, OK, pick a time when you get the most traffic. Um, I don't know. That's why I'm setting up these tools. So I'll leave it on default. The point of what this is, Google and Bing are going to be visiting your website once in a while. They're going to be crawling your website. They're going to be checking uh, your pages and all of that. Therefore, they're going to be sending traffic to your site. Traffic that comes to your site slows down your site. It's just the, the nature of things. That's why sites crash. 20,000 people came to my site, the site crashed. Your, the search engines are not going to crash your website. But if you know that you get more traffic from 5 to 11 p.m., Bing and Google will avoid coming to your website during those times when your site might be slower or when it might slow down your site. So I'll say, OK, well, um, yeah, that's the time. You visit my site these other times. You, you don't know. So I wouldn't change that until you've collected the data, and then it will tell you when your popular times are. And then you can change this so that it can browse your site more efficiently outside of the time when your, time, when your site is more popular. There's so, no problem with the, if I, I don't have a site map. Exactly. No problem at, at this point. I would want, you, you should add one eventually once you learn what it is and set one up. But at this point, I don't have one, and it's OK that I don't add it. OK, so I'm going to say add. I'm going to tell Bing, yep, that's my website. Well, the problem here is that, well, what was to stop me from doing this? Here's my site, ucsd.edu. I don't own. UCSD. I, I, I can't verify this. This is not my real site. What I'm saying is, when people set this up, they can put anything they want here to try to get the data. What stops them is this verification screen. This is how you confirm that you actually have access and own that website. This is like if I were to ask you in the real world, where do you live? And you say, I live on that mansion in La Jolla. And then I point to it right there. Well, you're not going to believe me until I walk up to the front door, unlock it, and step in. Or have my butler open the door and let me step in. So the way I'm going to confirm that I own these websites is one of these three methods. I have to pick one of these and do one of these. And I'll explain them right now. Yeah. What if you're you're going to need to get authorization. authorization. Yeah, once you have that, you'll be able to do any of these. Mm -hmm. So both Google and Bing have three or four different ways to verify. 
uh, one of them I would say like don't even bother with this way and then uh, the other ones depending uh, this number three right here don't even bother with this I've been working with websites for almost 20 years and this still is hard for me I would not do that I would not try to do this option about setting your C name and DNS records and all that that's don't even try that you have option one or two you have the possibility of Bing will give you this file called Bing site site auth .xml. These are like credentials that Bing is giving you that then you need to upload to your site. And Bing says, okay, we're gonna check on your site, victorsandiegobakery.com. We're gonna check to find that file. The only way that that file could exist on my site is if I uploaded it. I cannot access uh, you know the the server of UCSD to upload this file there to to make the confirmation of ownership. So one option is download this file, upload it to my site, and then I click verify down here, and it'll Bing will search for that file and see that it's there, and they'll say, okay, you own the site, you're able to upload to it. The other option is I could copy this one line of code and paste it into my home page into the code of my website if I know how to do that I can edit my website I can go to the home page and find the section of head <coughs> the head tag the head code and copy <coughs> copy the specific code that they're giving me and paste it in to validate I paste it into my site I come back to Bing I click verify uh, Bing then analyzes the code and finds that code that they gave me, and then they say, okay, you're legitimate, you're verified. So, Victor, in yeah. my case, I don't have a website yet, mm -hmm. but my friend uh, said, oh, okay, you can use my website. Is it possible or not? Not quite. Um, I would have to know a little bit more detail, but you probably want yourwebsite.com and if they're letting you use their website it's on their.com so you would be seeing traffic on their website not your website so I would just wait until you do have your own website to set up do you have perhaps maybe even like the .com name or anything like that at the moment if you have the name at the moment you can still do option one so I would probably wait yeah, in this case there's a, it's a company you know, it's a business. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I can you might some some information in Google Analytics and Bing. You might not. You might not be you able know? to. It it needs to be um, set up and verified with a uh, with a website. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. So doing this over at Google uh, is very similar. You're going to log into to the links that I have there on the PDF for Google. It's going to then ask you, put in your website, do one of those steps for Google. It will give you a different code, a different file, and you verify. Then it'll start to collect your information because then it'll eventually it'll look something like this. It'll show my website is there. It'll start to show me this data. I haven't verified, so it says you need to verify. But then it's going to start paying attention to your site and crawling your site and checking your data and your traffic and everything. And you're going to have these columns of information. We'll be able to click on it and see even more data. Um, so our step, our first step in order for Bing Webmaster or Google Analytics or Google Search Console to work is to set this up. Now, uh, we were having so much fun today that it's already 12.53, and the class ends at 1. So I'm going to end the main lecture with final questions, and then uh, if you want to try to set this up in the few minutes that we have, I could help you a little bit. Uh, we can have more time next time at the very beginning of the day if you would like. Uh, but are there general questions on what we talked about today so far? As soon as you verify, because um, it, it, then we could cheat it by setting this up for our competitor's website, 
And I would be then spying on the competitor's traffic, so we have to verify to see our own data. How would you verify for the parked page? I would do the option number one, because you have a domain, you have a server, there's just nothing there. So you would upload this file to the website, and the search engines will find it. Even, without, even with an empty website, there will be a file there to latch onto to confirm that it's your website. Any other general questions? So over the weekend on your own, if you're able to try to set these up, try to set up the Bing and the, and the Google tools, you'll see back on the handout um, and the, in the Google section the links. What I said about Google is that there's two of them, Webmasters uh, and Analytics. So Bing is just one place, but with Google you do it on two different places. It's very similar again. You put your website, you verify through one of their methods, and then you start to collect data. Yeah? Uh, this data retention, is there, is there, is there different? Data retention? I got a message here at the 25th of their notes and data retention controls. Well, what's happening over in Europe, which seems to be more on the cutting edge of privacy, is that they are changing a lot of things uh, in Europe about um, online uh, data storage. So um, many websites are then now starting to have to comply with that um, for European audiences. So that's most likely saying something about that with, in accordance to international laws, we are going to do this, this, and that. All right, so that's it for the moment. We'll have a tiny little bit of lab time in case you need it. When we come back next time, we'll talk about this a little bit more, and then we'll look at what data we have. Uh, even if you don't have data, I'll show you an example from clients about how it looks like and then what to do with it. Yes? Mm -hmm. Let me put those class notes in the folder right now.